Hello and welcome to Easy Projects. So a few videos ago I asked you what kind of projects you would like to see next and uh, the winner of that, as you might have guessed from the title of the video and maybe the text here, was a pick and place machine. In fact it was the clear winner with nine votes and the runner-up is a uh, DIY power supply. Actually I started this already so I just wrote resume the project um, someone's also interested in a DIY oscilloscope and then an uh, MPPT solar charge controller. I'm interested in doing all these projects but uh, I have to take one at a time. If you want to influence the results you can still go to my Patreon page and vote. You don't have to be a Patreon to vote, uh, you just need to have an account there. And of course if you want to support my channel uh, you can do so. But that's entirely up to you. All the funding that I do get from my Patreons will go into the more expensive projects like the pick and place machine. I actually tried to record this video three times already. <laughs> the first time though wasn't uh, all the way through, just uh, about 10 minutes. I noticed that my uh, microphone was slowly running out of juice and the audio was unusable. If you saw the first video with this lapel microphone I mentioned that it had less noise, but already in that video it was starting to die. The battery wasn't good uh, out of the, uh, the pack uh, and it just died uh, without much use at all. So I hope actually in this video it will be even better. The second time I actually finished the video, uh, but I just didn't edit it. And I received a lot of the parts since then, so I thought, well, well just, just make a new video. Just a quick uh, disclaimer if you want. This video is just a introduction and uh, I'll tell you about my thoughts and show you some of the parts that I ordered. There will not be done any work uh, in this video. So if you just want to see me do something then unfortunately you have to wait till the next video. Before I go into showing you the concept and some of the parts, I would like to talk about what a pick and place machine is because maybe not everyone is familiar with that. I found a picture here on a free media uh, website, so there no licenses there. And uh, what you see here is pretty much the entire machine. The space in the middle here is a conveyor where a circuit board can travel. It could be a board like this. And uh, what the machine will do is place all the surface mount components, so uh, the components that doesn't have any uh, holes. Before the board enters this machine though, it will already have been through a machine where it applies solar paste to all the SMD pads uh, through a stencil. That's quite easy to do by hand, so uh, I can do that by myself. I don't need a machine for that. Then the board enters the machine and sits here in the middle. The pick and place uh, head will uh, go to pick up components. It can either be in uh, feeders like this or it can be from a tray or from a tube. Most commonly uh, components will come on a reel. It's just a circular reel of any size really. It can be quite big or quite small and it will have a tape on it with components in them. It can be like this for uh, resistors, capacitors, etc. It's a cardboard tape with a plastic cover over the components. Each component sits in a little cavity here and the tape has these uh, holes here that the feeder can grab into and pull the tape forwards. So the feeder will simply separate the top film and the tape so that the component is exposed and the pick and place head will come and pick it up with a vacuum tool and transfer it over to the board and put it down. The excess tape will be rolled away and spooled up and the tape advances uh, forward one component at a time so the uh, pickup tool will always go to the same position and pick it up and then the tape will just move forward and it will take the next one. For ICs and uh, stuff like that the tape has to be anti-static so it will it will usually be 
this type of plastic. It can come in much wider sizes also for bigger parts. If you don't have many parts of a particular kind, you can get them in trays also. That's usually uh, most common for big components, I think. Then uh, the pick and place head will just be programmed to advance one position to pick up each time. As you see, the trays will take up much more space than a feeder. Actually, in the beginning, I don't plan to make feeders. I will run my machine like a, a tray system. Even for the tape, in the beginning, I plan to just lay it down against some kind of a stop to make sure it has the correct alignment. And then just tell the tool to pick up each one. That means I have to pull back all the tape at once. And uh, yeah, that has some disadvantages, obviously. The good thing is that a feeder can always be added and it's not that difficult to change the program if you take it into account from the beginning. So after the board has had all the components mounted, it will go forward out of the machine and it will go into an oven basically that heats it up and melts the solder paste and that's what creates the solar joint. And after that, you might have to add some through hole parts and solder them and then your board is done. So as you see, what we need here is a uh, an X axis, a Y axis, also a Z axis. Uh, some machines has like uh, many pickup tools, probably one big uh, Z axis and then it has many small tools to go and pick up the components. I will probably just make it with one pickup tool in the beginning and maybe I'll add another one if there's any issues with the uh, one size tool to pick up all the components. I imagine the bigger components could be a problem if I also want to pick up the small ones. To drive the X and Y axis I plan to use uh, stepper motors uh, like this this is a NEMA 14, I think. I will probably use NEMA 17. They are more uh, common and they have a bit better torque than this. For the C axis, I'm not sure yet, but maybe this exact motor here, or it could be something like this here. It's a stepper motor also, but it's uh, geared as far as I know. I never tried using it actually. The last time I used stepper motors, I used one of these DRE8825 uh, to drive them. And the viewers went absolutely batshit crazy because they are very loud. Or I should say the motors are very loud. These just uh, drive them in uh, fixed steps. And especially if you don't give it the steps in a completely smooth sequence, then the motor will jump to the next position and that creates a lot of vibration and that makes noise. So for this time I opted to go for TMC 2100s which are uh, quiet uh, stepper motor drivers made by Trinamic. So of course if that was it it would be quite simple but we have some challenges with the pick and place machine because Imagine your uh, part is here when you need to pick it up and you need to place it here. In this case I used a through hole part because it's bigger and easier to show but it would be SMD obviously. If you take it and put it here it's pretty easy you can fit it but if your board is like this and your part is like this it ain't gonna fit. So you need to be able to rotate your part once you pick it up. So the C-axis has to be uh, rotating or the nozzle has to be able to rotate. And I would like it to be as lightweight as possible, uh, the head itself, so that it doesn't have so much momentum when it's moving back and forth. I found these geared uh, mini stepper motors. It doesn't re require any load basically, it's just rotating a nozzle. So I hope these will do. It's uh, 
it has a little bit of play in the uh, shaft but um, yeah, it's difficult to show on video but it's it's not much so I think that will be fine we can always just take the backlash into consideration and always say when we move clockwise we go straight to the position and when we move counterclockwise we go a bit too far and then a bit back clockwise that should give us the backlash always in one direction so that takes care of picking up the component and rotating it that might work for very big parts like uh, ICs with large lead span and so on but what if your component lays a bit crooked in the tape that means you pick it up like this and you rotate it 90 degrees so it's a bit off like that when you try to place it so the way I plan to solve that is to have a camera mounted in the bed of the machine so when we pick up the component we move it over here we use some computer vision to uh, track the edges of the part and then that can give us an angle that we need to correct it to get it straight also it can find the edges and make us put the component in the center of the view here to zero it out so we can put it straight down on the pads and it's not shifted to any side I reckon this is what takes the most of the work the rest of it is, is quite simple I found some of these uh, eBay webcams that can actually focus pretty close to the uh, lens for the small components uh, especially I think we need to get pretty close to get a good uh, precision on the angle tracking so obviously one of the most important elements of a big and place machine is the vacuum and that comes from a vacuum pump and I bought this from uh, China I just quickly tried it and it seems to work quite nicely I'm not sure how long it will uh, last until it's worn out but uh, only time will tell this is one of the components that I got since uh, last time and we can actually demonstrate uh, some things with this so the pickup tool itself I plan to make from these uh, nozzles it's a hollow tube just like a syringe it's just not sharp obviously it comes from a solder paste dispenser kit you can buy these on eBay also pretty cheaply I bought a set with different size uh, nozzles this one for the small parts and this one for the bigger parts you might be quite surprised that this little bitty tiny one can pick up a decent size IC like this and uh, this one here will easily pick up uh, this dip package which is quite heavy uh, actually in terms of uh, electronic components and to show how this works I quickly hooked up the vacuum pump to a hose and I can use these tools to pick things up and just without any seal just holding it together with my hands I can actually pick up stuff so So I could do this just by turning on and off the pump uh, with some kind of a relay or a MOSFET. Depending on uh, how long the tubing is, that might be possible. But on the other hand, I could make a, a tank and I could uh, just pressure regulate the tank. Just let the pump run and remove the air from the tank. And then use a valve, uh, something like this to open and close it just not this particular one because I <laughs> bought the wrong one this one actually needs a pressure to operate the valve I didn't think about that uh, so not this one so back to the uh, machine here 
We now have a camera to, to check the alignment of the components, but there might also be variations in the boards themselves. So you can make a mechanical stop on two sides and you can put your board against that and you can do that uh, repeatedly. But if the board itself is not cut straight, uh, then it will uh, be in a different position. And until now we have no way to take that into account. We could do it manually. Each time we put in a new board, we can bring over the tool with a component and just check the alignment. But that is not going to be fast and we would like to at least semi-automate this. We can mount a camera on the pig and place head that will just always follow it. So we know the distance from the camera to the tool itself. It's just a fixed offset. So if we go and locate a particular point on the board, usually we will use fiducial marks for that. That's just a, a little ring of uh, copper. And we can center in on that and set this as a, a known location. We can do that uh, for a couple of other points. And then we can let the software uh, calculate the position of this board. Then it doesn't really matter if we put it in like this. We could basically put it down anywhere. Just let the software uh, compute it. And then we can transform our machine coordinates to our board coordinates. So we always just pick up the component. We let the machine do the calculation. So if this was 90 degrees before, it will now have a new value and a new position. So the machine will automatically uh, put it correctly. If you want to be really, really precise, especially on something like BTA packages, you can put these marks locally even. So when it does the large components, or the, the non-critical components, it will just use the, the global fiducial marks on the board. Then when it goes to put down a critical part, it will check the fiducial marks close to that part and center in on that and put the component down and then go back to the global uh, coordinates. I don't think I will be needing that though. Um, that is just a, a software feature so it could be added anyway. This camera is quite big though so I uh, have another idea. A few years ago I bought one of these uh, borescopes on eBay. It's basically a thin camera on a wire that you can put into places and you can uh, see what's behind stuff and into down into holes. It's meant to plug into a phone with a <laughs> micro USB connect. <laughs> and actually right now I don't have anything that I can plug this into. And I don't have an adapter to put it into the computer. So I ordered that and I will wait a few days for that to arrive. I don't remember about the quality of the image, but I remember it wasn't too bad. I believe I can use this and this is very small and the only real challenge here is to get it aligned because it can rotate. But once you find the correct position and clamp it then that's basically it and you won't have to move it again. It even has built-in LED lights if uh, if that's necessary. <laughs> I have been thinking quite a bit uh, of the software and how to control the machine, especially uh, the computer vision. <laughs> uh, I have never worked with that before, so I have no idea how difficult or how easy it is. I can't imagine it would be that difficult though to track uh, four edges of a square part and then find the center of that and align it to the center of the camera and uh, correct the angle also. The rest of the software, picking up the components and placing it, that will take some time to make, but it's, it's pretty straightforward. When you finished your circuit board, you'll get an, uh, a pick and place file from the program also that has X, Y coordinates and a rotation. So it's just a matter of importing that. Depending on how well you made the, the component footprints, um, 
it might just be plug and play. You just need to be consistent where you put the reference or the origin of the component. I am tempted to run this whole thing on a Raspberry Pi 4. I just bought one and I played around with it. It's just the one gigabyte version because I think the others are a bit uh, expensive compared to what you actually get extra. But I guess they, they have to make their money somehow. I don't even think it has to be a Raspberry Pi 4. I have a Raspberry Pi 3 also. Uh, I think it's it was in picture before. But uh, right now I have my Retro Pi gaming set up on this and uh, we're not really allowed to, to mess around too much with that, are we? I have the uh, one of the first Raspberry Pis, also it's the uh, Model B+, Plus, but I think that will be too slow. So we should go for one of these. The good thing though about the Raspberry Pis is you just take your SD card and you uh, put in another one and you have a different system. So I could just uh, use it for both things. But I don't really think I want to do that. I just dedicate one to the machine. It would be entirely possible to run this on a computer, a laptop for example. I just don't think I want to deal with the hassle of always having to bring the PC and then plug in the things and while the machine is running I can't use the computer for, for anything else. Depending on the requirements for the computer visioning system. We could offload the driving of the motors to an Arduino or another microcontroller platform like this ST. Not this size. Uh, it could be much smaller obviously. And then just send uh, coordinates to uh, the external controller and that will handle the driving of the motors. I really don't think it will be necessary though and I think we can just do it with the Raspberry Pi. The good thing about uh, the pick and place machine compared to a 3D printer for example is it doesn't really matter if we have uh, alignment or what, what should I say, uh, synchronization between the two axes. On a 3D printer you want to make a precise line for example at 45 degrees and you want the two motors to move at the same speed so you have to send the pulses in the right order and the right timing. For the pick and place machine it, it doesn't really matter if we pick up the part and go uh, x-axis y-axis and then put it down or if we go directly to the spot. It's much 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 simpler in that regard. It might turn out to be easier though to program an Arduino to take acceleration and deacceleration into account and just simply give it a new coordinate. Uh, do this, do this, do this, do this and so on. I didn't make up my mind yet. Uh, I think uh, I will try to go with the Raspberry Pi only first and then I can add in another one if that's uh, necessary. I also want to hear your opinion. Should I try to make the software entirely by myself? Or should I go online and see if I can find something that I can use? Obviously for the computer vision uh, system I will use OpenCV. Uh, I, I don't want to make that by myself, that's for sure. I think it could be quite fun to make everything from the uh, importers to the sequencing and the location of the different things but I'm pretty sure it will take a long time also. Uh, so let me know if you know of any uh, program that's quite decent and easy to use maybe we should consider it. So I think that's it for this uh, introduction uh, video. If you like the project then please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends that helps a lot. If you are new to the channel then please consider to subscribe and go back and check some of my older videos. Thanks for watching and uh, see you for the next one. See you.